What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2005 BMW 325i. Up front is a 2.5 liter inline six and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here E46 for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that it's been a couple of years since I've driven an E46 BMW. The E46 lasted from 1999 till 2006 here in the States. However, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. And it's one of my favorite chassis of BMW. And I think it's important as a reviewer to go back and sort of check in on cars that I haven't driven in a couple of years to make sure that my opinions on them either haven't changed or if they have changed to adapt them as necessary. So this is me re-upping my E46 in my mind to see how good it really is. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack, 80s car sticker, or big friggin' bottle sticker, all of them with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you'd get a video of your car just like this one, and you could read my behind-the-scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that inline six under the hood. Well, this particular one only makes about 184 horsepower, which in terms of BMW, in terms of inline six, in terms of sedans, it's not all that much power. However, you don't really notice the power deficit because inline sixes have this signature feel. They have more grunt than a four cylinder and they're also really, really balanced. They're really smooth engines. And so the driving experience is actually really, really good. I feel like I have enough power to go around town to do my business, to have a little bit of fun on the side for sure. I'm just not blowing anyone out of the water and you know what, that's okay. Like I said, paired to it, five speed manual transmission. I really do like the feeling of it. It's very, very BMW and it does have this reverse lockout where you have to push extra hard to the left in order to get it into reverse. Very, very signature BMW. Last but not least, the 325i is rear wheel drive. However, this body style also did get an all wheel drive version, the iX, of which I reviewed a long, long time ago from my good friend Garrett. So with all that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have very simple gauges from BMW. On the far left is my fuel, then I have my speedometer and tachometer in the center and coolant temperature off to the right. I do have a check engine light on for the catless downpipe this vehicle has, and I do get an information gauge down in the center, giving me my odometer, trip odometer, and miles till empty. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume controls, skip track, voice commands, and things like that. And on the right, I have my cruise control options. Very, very nice to see here in the E46. The overall look and feel of the steering wheel is actually a lot more modern than I would have thought. Yes, this is a 2005, but it could easily pass as a 2012. And I really, really like that. Off to the left, I do have my headlight switches, gauge dimmer switches, and fog lights. And on the door, I just have my power mirror options. There are no window options over here, and we'll talk about why in a little bit. Moving into the center, I do have two climate control vents and the radio. So something I always love that BMW does. Don't really know why they did this. If anyone has an explanation on why they called it business CD and not just regular CD, please let me know. But very typical for the time with BMW is that they said business CD. I find that hilarious. I also do get my climate controls in here, pretty standard stuff. I do get auto, which is very, very nice, but rudimentary beyond that. Then I do get a little cubby. I get heated seats and my traction control button. So press it once to turn the traction control halfway off, hold it to turn it all the way off in case you really wanna get rowdy in your 325. Then I have another cubby, which holds the ashtray and cigarette lighter. And then we come to the shifter area. First of all, around the shifter, this is actually where we'll find our window options. So I have all four power window switches. And then of course on the left, I do have my window locks or child locks basically. Kind of a European thing to do to put the window switches down here. However, I did notice an issue with this this morning is that I was trying to roll up both windows at once, but my hand wasn't big enough to stretch from 
one button to the next. Kind of annoying there, but other than that, it's just a BMW quirk. Then we get the actual shifter itself. I think it looks fantastic. Like I said, it feels pretty good. I've never been really 100% over the moon with BMW shifters. They don't have a very linear grasp, if that makes sense, where they just kind of free float out in space and then they go into the gate, kind of an interesting feeling. But down below that, I have my hazard switch and central locking button, and then we have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the E46 325i, and unfortunately, it does not pass the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> then we get the center console and the handbrake, nothing too interesting there. And then we have the seats. These are the sport seats that were optional back in 2005 and they really do hold you really really well they are leather and yes they do have sportier higher bolsters but they're not insanely highly bolstered like a civic type r or focus rs and so being a bigger guy i actually still fit in them which is a very very nice treat however speaking of seats we do have back seats so let's go do a back seat review all right so we're in the back of the 2005 bmw 325i and unfortunately the headliner is sagging just a little bit so it is sort of touching my hair a little bit but that's not the end of the world the back seat space is actually not that bad my knees are barely touching the seat in front of me not bad at all i do have window switches on the door which is interesting i guess there wasn't room in the center for them i don't get a center console or anything anything like that. However, I do get these little lights over my shoulder. I don't know if you could see that on camera, which is a nice little feature, but nothing crazy beyond that. It's a pretty regular back seat. Let's go hop around the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the 325i. We do have a little key slot right here. Just pop it like that and pull it up. Now, something I've always found interesting about older BMWs, they don't do this anymore, but yes, they had a roadside assistance phone number, but this is also a toolkit. Let's see how many tools are actually left in the toolkit. Oh, a fair amount. We do have the tow hook, tire iron, little BMW branded wrenches, which is really, really cool. And they used to do this but unfortunately, BMW has since stopped doing these little toolkits in the backs of their cars. Kind of an interesting older BMW quirk. But the actual trunk space is pretty decent for this size of car. And we can pull this up and we do have a spare tire as well. So nothing crazy to write home about, but definitely adequate for a sedan like this. Now we got to talk about the looks. And I love the look of the E46. I think it's proportioned really really well i think it's very handsome i think it's aged incredibly well and just overall it's one of the most iconic bmws for me i think they really hit it out of the park not only with the looks but we're just talking about the looks for right now however like i said at the top of the video with the model years there's something interesting about the e46s so 2005 here in the united states was the last year for the e46 sedan this car this is the very last year for this car. However, they kept producing the coupe and convertible into 2006. So you could get a 2006 model year coupe or convertible E46, but not the sedan. The sedan had already switched over to the E90 chassis for 2006. So there's a mismatched year of the E46. Very, very interesting. It's very rare that a car maker would do that, sell an older model alongside the brand new model. But BMW did it in the mid 2000s. But now with all of that being said, all of that jargon and hubbub out in the world, what do I think driving this E46. Well, like I said, I'm no stranger to an E46. I've driven a bunch of them. I've done the M3. I've done an all-wheel drive one. I've done the coupe, but it's been a while. How do I feel about the E46? Well, it's still good. It's still one of my favorite chassis to ever come out of BMW. It still has great proportions, great driving feel, and enough modern amenities to still be considered in today's market. However, let's talk about today's market. If you're looking for a sign to buy an E46, 
let this be one. Now is the time to own one of these because the market for them has pretty much bottomed out and is starting to rebound just a little bit. We saw it with the E36. E36 is when I first started driving were dirt cheap throw away cars. And now if you want a clean example, you're looking at five digits. Well, that's out of a lot of people's budget. This E46 with the stick shift, 140,000 miles, sure, but a clean example, goes for about $5,000. That's not bad. I've definitely, definitely seen worse. It's still relatively feasible to own one of these for a decent price here in 2022. Now, I know that this portion will age like milk and probably in 10 years, these will be very hard to find. But I would be remiss by not mentioning something now. I'll say it again. If you're looking for a sign to buy an E46, now is the time. If you really want to own one, I don't know what else you're waiting for. They're only going to get older and they're only going to start to go back up in value when they become more and more scarce. If you let the E36 slip out of your hands, don't let the E46 because these cars are really, truly fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to my good friend Ward for letting me take out his 325i. It's always good to be back in an E46. Ward has a detailing business. If you're looking to get your vehicle detailed in the Chicagoland area, Ward's information can be found in the description below. He's absolutely fantastic. One of the best in the biz at least for my money, and I very much appreciate him letting me take out his E46. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.